The Roman Stoic Seneca the Younger said, A sword never kills anybody. It is a tool in the killer's hand. What can swords reveal about their wielders beyond their function as weapons? One of Western Mindanao's beloved epics is the story of Indarapatra, the Raja of Mantapuli, and his courageous warrior brother, Sulaiman. A long time ago, the mountainous terrain of Mindanao was infested with monsters that brought great misery to the kingdom's inhabitants. Sulaiman fought off and vanquished the monsters with the help of the ring and magical Chris sword called Jurupakal, endowed to him by Indarapatra. The myth of Indrapatra and Sulaiman and the presence of the Chris in its narrative shows our regional connections with our Southeast Asian neighbors. The Chris, or Keris, originates from the island of Java in Indonesia and has widely spread among the Muslim indigenous groups of Mindanao. In the Philippines, the dagger-length Chris evolved into the sword-length Kali Seko, which proved more effective for stabbing and thrusting motions. Both Chris and Kali Seko are distinguished by a wavy blade, either partially or fully, and can either be double or single-edged. Being highly stylized in shape, this weapon functions well in ceremony or as status symbol. As an armament, it is effective in cutting through flesh, acting like a serrated blade, though wood sometimes break off when caught in bone or armor. Another sword favored by the Muslim cultural groups of Mindanao which has proven to be formidable in combat is the barong. It is recognized by its leaf-shaped blade and a concave pommel, which is either plain or well-decorated, depending on its use. The blade is often thick and heavy, making it highly efficient in slicing and chopping, whether as a tool or weapon. Nobility among the indigenous Muslim groups would own more elaborately embellished weapons such as this Yakan Barong in the museum collection. The sheath is decorated with mother-of-pearl panels and inlaid with 10 centavo coins, with ornate carvings on both ends. Near the opening is a woven silk textile wrap around the sheath. The hardwood pommel is carved with a naga or snake-like design. Barongs and other swords of this level of ornamentation usually indicate a ceremonial use or affirmation of status. During the Spanish and colonial periods, and even up until the Japanese occupation, Muslim freedom fighters have earned both notoriety and admiration for their fierce defense of Mindanao territories. The Spanish began to refer to them as juramentados, and accounts would describe them as fearlessly wielding kris and barong swords. The latter supposedly are able to cut through rifles during close combat. Another machete form associated with the Filipino is the Philippine bolo. It is primarily used as an agricultural tool ranging in size for purposes such as basic cutting to pruning of overgrowth. The bolo's ubiquity among the Indios, especially among laborers, made it easy for the tool to be converted into a weapon once the Philippine Revolution was in full swing. As such, it became an important symbol of the common man's struggle for sovereignty in the fight against Spain and later the US. Symbolizing folk or nobility, bravery or ceremony, swords have been a part of our lives and history. Although they remind us of the bloodshed and violence of the past, they also help us remember the battles we fought for and what we enjoy and must continue to protect. <laughs>